Mrs. Seaver? <laughs> I'm Jude Atkins. I'm a friend of Ravi's. He was found by the side of the road. Hit and run, they said. A woman discovered him, the vicar's wife, you know, from that gospel church. I'm so sorry. Apparently he was in such a bad state, they wouldn't let me see the body. Well, they said it was definitely him. But you see, I, I was using the car last night. I'd collected him. I know this isn't very much. He personally done some tests on my son, even though he didn't really have the time. <sighs> That's Ravi. He must have been here for hours after then, working up that special case of his. Is there anything I can do? Um, I think I'll come back for all of this after... when I'm feeling a little stronger. Um, uh, could you put the rest of these things in, in this box and, and tape the lid on? Um, thank you. I know he wouldn't have wanted any fuss. Turn. Nice lunch venue. Didn't realize they serve food in here these days. Oh, yes, they've converted the crematorium into a Burger King. Uh, well, I suppose they used to flame grilled whoppers. Thank you. Thanks. So, how's Joey been? Well, the tests didn't find anything unusual. Good. Not that there is a medical test for whether your father was a demon or not. Oh, we don't know, really. None of them's ever come in for a bupa checkup. John, did you pick up any activity last night? Why do you ask? So you did. Look, there's something I should have told you earlier, but I didn't want to worry you. I know a woman called Emily Hawthorne. With the hearing aid, yes, I've met her. Well, that wasn't entirely coincidental. I sent her to take a look at Joey. She's what most people would call psychic. Oh? We think losing her hearing made her inner senses particularly acute. She swears there's nothing wrong with Joey at all. You see these flowers? Do you see how brown and wilted they are? How long would you say it takes for a fresh bunch of flowers to get like these? About three weeks. That's right. This is my grandfather's grave. I put them here exactly three weeks ago. I'm sorry. No, don't be. The point is, what sort of conditions would make a fresh bunch of flowers like these in the space of a short time? Particularly if they'd been found in the hands of a dead man last night. Dr. Ravi Sivo, said to be the victim of a hit and run, his wife was discouraged from viewing the remains. Why are you telling me this? I have to be completely sure that it wasn't Joey. So did you pick up something last night? Yes. I've been looking for a lead all morning. Well, shouldn't be too difficult. Can't be many gospel churches around here.
All contributions gratefully received. John! <laughs> hey! Don't be too grateful, it's just a few mild books. There. Right. So, how are you? Oh, well, you know, just the humdrum life of a defrocked, mad person making his way in the world. I didn't know you were still around. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have a small padded house behind the cathedral close. <laughs> well, thanks. Every little helps. Oh, well, this should go down well with the Women's Institute. I'll probably be here most of the night trying to sift out the things that we can make an honest penny from. How's Marion? Ah, uh, she's not been too well. She suffers from depression. I'm sorry to hear that. I hear she had a distressing experience last night. Yes, it was most upsetting for her. She came across this. Well, let's just say it wasn't pretty. Well, what exactly did she see? John, if you don't mind, I, I think it'd be better for all of us to keep off the subject. Oh? In what way? The canon thought the that... The canon? <laughs> don't tell me he said it was... Healthier if the whole thing was brushed under his thick and by now bulging carpet. John, I can't risk this affecting Marion any further. You of all people ought to understand what the effects could be. You're right. I do understand. Perhaps more than most. That's why, if you care about Marion, you should let me talk to her about what she saw. I'm afraid that's impossible. Why? Kindness doesn't enter into it. Now, I want you to make yourself completely at home. We won't bother you unless you want to talk to us. Oh, thank you. You can come and go as you please, of course. But Doddington will accompany you outside the house. Now I expect you're rather tired. Oh, I haven't been sleeping well recently. Then permit me to let you into my little secret. I've suffered from insomnia for years. These will send you off in no time. I find them a godsend. I'm sure my doctor won't mind if I pass them on to someone more in need of them than myself. Now, there'll be no more worries about being alone in the house while your husband is engaged in his duties. No. You treat the whole place just as if it were your own. Except this room, of course. Oh, yes. Thanks again. None necessary. Sleep well. And listen, go to bed when Auntie Mary tells you. And Joey, stay there. I'll be back later. Hmm? Just one biscuit. I love you. Bye. Hello. Hello again. Dreadful visitee tonight. Miserable as sin. Even refused my apples. John told me what you were doing yesterday. Are you sure there's nothing? Yes, I'm almost certain. He's a bright little boy, isn't he? I hope I didn't startle him too much. No, I don't think so. The children next door say I'm a witch, you know. They tell everyone I use this to find my victims. I'm sure he doesn't think that. Good. I must be off. My sister will be waiting for her tea and poisonous gossip. Bye. Oh, I'll see you again. <laughs> <laughs>